All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Asus uh, 512D notebook PC. So first we're going to remove all the screws from the bottom using a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. Okay, so let's go ahead and undo them all. The customer said the battery's bad, so that's what we're replacing here. Okay. Um, I don't know if they opened this before. So far this screw is a little bit longer than the other ones. Um, but yeah, it's always a good idea to keep them in order. All right, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their device as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, if you can't help out that way, you can help out by liking, watching a few other of my videos and then liking and commenting on those as well. Um, I also have another channel called It's Been Reviewed that I'm trying to grow. So if you can search for that one and then um, subscribe to that as well. It needs a bit more watch time and like 52 more subscribers. So hopefully I'll be able to get that one up soon. All right. Anyways, now that we got all these screws out, let's go ahead and pop the bottom cover off. Um, oh yeah, these screws are also shorter than the rest. So yeah, don't mix them up. You're going to destroy your computer. Okay, so what I do is I get my fingernail on there, and then I'll push on the palm rest, and you can see how it just popped out. Okay, same thing over here, just like that. Obviously, you can use pry tools if you want, but that's how I do it. All right, so we'll get in there. I'll pull up like that with these fingers and push down with my thumbnail, and you can see how it just pops up. All right, and we'll just continue working our way over, just like that. We'll work over to here and do the same thing. Okay, and this... It looks like the cover kind of wraps over, so let's see how we're going to do this. We probably have to like swing it and then slide it this way, but let me see. Do we need to open the screen to get to it? Uh, no, okay. So let's go ahead and just kind of lift this a bit more. Hmm. Okay, I can kind of see the edge here, but it's not easy to get to, so... I don't know, how do you pop this back part off? I think I might have to do it with the computer open, but let's see. Push here, okay, push down, and no, I can't get that up. All right, so let's go ahead and carefully open the screen. And then, hopefully, you can see the back edge here. So I'm going to get my fingernail and try and slide it there to pop any clips out. I do feel the gap kind of opened a little bit but it's not easy wow this one's hard to get off okay there we go so you might have to slide a pry tool or whatever I'm sliding my fingernails across the back here and I did feel some clip on the back here come out but it's not easy there we go okay I think they're all out but let's see so now that we got the clips let's flip it over and see if we can open it and push it off there we go Okay, so we got the bottom cover off. This battery is right here. Um, there's a lot of little things kind of blocking it. I'm not going to be taking everything out, but I'll kind of explain what there is. There's an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD, uh, uh, SSD here. One screw, PH1 or JS1. You have a room here for another 2.5 inch SATA hard drive. It looks like some models will come with a little adapter here. So you could probably add another hard drive if you wanted. There's a speaker here, the connector here. Usually I'll grab with my fingernails on the edge of the wings and then just wiggle to pull. And that has a cable running along the battery to the other speaker here. Wireless antennas going across, also running over the battery here. One antenna, they wrap them on here. So actually one antenna is here and one antenna is here. Okay. This looks like the keyboard backlight connector. There's a little flip latch, the black one. You kind of flip it up and then you can pull that out. Battery connectors here. You take it out by sliding this up. Okay, actually, let me get a thumbnail real quick. So we'll go in here. It's a little dusty. Let me kind of clean it a little. It's actually, this design doesn't get too dusty because what it does is it pulls air in. It blows the air across the heat sink here and over here. It's actually not really a good um, thermal design. If you see this white line, the casing, so it has this piece that kind of blocks it off. So the air will just basically get pulled through here and then flow through and then blow out the back right here. Okay, but uh, I don't think it's a very good design. There's not much... Um, what do you call surface area? So usually the heat sink will have like those little thin fins that it blows air directly through. 
This one doesn't have that. All right, there's the RAM here. You can pull these two tabs to the side, pops up like that. They covered this with tape, so I'm not quite sure what kind of RAM this is. It looks like, okay, this is DDR4. So yeah, PC4, 2666V, probably RAM should work. I don't see, oh, here's a label, okay. So yeah, PC4, 2666V. So you should be okay with any DDR4 RAM. There is only one stick. I know somebody's probably gonna be like, oh, there's two sticks in the blah, blah, blah. Like I looked on, don't, there's only one stick, okay? If there's more RAM, it's soldered to the motherboard somewhere. But a lot of times people will say that like, I see that there's two sticks in here. No, there's only one, okay? All right, you can upgrade this to as large as you want. If you want, I don't know if they have 16 gig sticks, <clears throat> but you can upgrade it to as large as you want. <clears throat> Usually it doesn't matter as long as you match the type of RAM, which is PC4 2666V or DDR4 RAM 266, uh, 2666 megahertz. All right, anyways, um, you got the keyboard connector here. You got, I'm pretty sure that's the touchpad connector. Well, we'll find out because we need to take this metal bar out. So let's take that out real quick. All right. So there's three screws holding this piece down, this black screw, this silver screw, and then we got one more screw over here. Okay, there we go. If you want, um, be careful with this, but uh, I probably should have showed you how to disconnect the battery first, just so you don't um, accidentally drop that metal piece in here and damage things. So this has a little metal tab. You slide that forward. Once you slide that, you can get underneath the white part and then pull that up. Make sure you're just pulling the white part and not the connector underneath some people they don't know and then they like try and like pry the whole thing up or they use pry tools and they can't feel well and then they pry the whole thing and destroy it but there you go um if i had not already mentioned wireless card there the antennas you go from the tail if you want to pull it out and pull it straight up um if you want to see a video how to do that um watch a few of my other videos some i will show it some i don't the reason i don't is sometimes the solder on here is not good and the little connector rips off it's pretty rare but i don't do it unless i need to because sometimes it can lead to damaging things because the design or they didn't make the part properly so yeah some people are like oh just show every little piece i can't do that because i've run into times where even just taking it apart like you do that and even though you do everything right because they didn't do the solder right or whatever things will break anyways there's this connector here flip latch you can pull this out all right you got the fan connector right there two usb ports so these two USB ports are connected to the motherboard with this cable. So if for some reason these USB ports aren't working or you need to replace them, you can disconnect this cable, separate it and take that out. If you damage this cable, you do need to get underneath the motherboard to get it out. So yeah, be very careful with this. You don't wanna damage that. Okay, um, let's go ahead and continue taking out the battery now. So now I have screws in the way. So move that out and see if I can get this all in view. All right, so we got this. We already took out that screw and that screw because it was being held uh, by that little bracket. So we got this one screw down here and I think that's all of them. We might have to take out the antennas, but we're gonna try not to, okay? So the reason, again, I told you, um, you can break these connectors even if it's uh, done properly. Sometimes you can break them just because the solder. So try and hold these down like this and then route these cables out, okay? So these you kinda, oh, the black one's on top. So let's get that one out first, okay? Like this, all right. And then just thread it all around. Nope, oh, see this antenna already came out. All right, well, it didn't break, so we're okay. <laughs> all right, anyways, let's go ahead and get all these out. And then get this out. Okay, actually, it's only in the top. We don't need to take it out from the speaker portion there. Okay, and then the speaker cable, we need to get this out as well. So unthread that. It goes over, under, over, under. Okay, just like that. Okay, and again, you only need to remove it from the battery. You don't need to remove it from this gray plastic area. So now we should be okay to lift this up. Just find a place you can get underneath and lift it. And it looks like it. This these two pieces hook on this, okay? So you do wanna lift it like this way. All right, so here's the replacement battery. The battery model number, they put it on the bottom so it's hard to find it, but here it is. Uh, C, 
sorry, C21N1818-1, okay, C21N1818-1, there you go, and the replacement battery should be the same, C21N1818-1, uh, okay, so same thing, flip it over, um, get it hooked on there, okay, slowly lower this down, all right, and drop it into place. Make sure the wires are out of the way so it can drop down completely. Okay, and there we go. Then we get this blue wire and then thread it back on. So we have the gray one and then, oh, it's going on top of this cable. Okay, so this one goes over, then under, then over, then under, then over, and then back under. All right, and then you got the black and white cables doesn't matter which one's on top just thread it through these little thingies here okay get in there all right same thing with the white cable all right let's go ahead and reattach this so the way you reattach the wireless antenna if you accidentally popped it off is you get it and you just line it up and if you wiggle it you see it gets caught it'll get caught when you have it in the right place so be very careful that you don't just try and force it down okay you can see it's hooked on now and then you just push it straight down and there we go that's how you reattach the antenna cable okay there we go make sure that's in okay as for the connector make sure you don't put this upside down you can see this side the edge is solid this side the edge has these lines that's how you know those lines attach to this. So just line it up, make sure you get everything lined up so that you don't put in the connectors crooked and then push straight down, it clicks, and then slide this latch back over the top so that it doesn't slide out on its own, all right? Let me make sure it's in all the way, okay? And then pull that on top. I feel like it's not sliding as far as it did before, but I mean, this is clicked in all the way, and yeah. All right, get the cables out of the way so that they're not gonna get crushed by the cover or anything. Let's zoom back out, get the screws back in, and we should be good to go. All right, so we'll get that screw in. Let's get this metal plate back on top. Okay. Oh, this isn't lining up quite right. Make sure you get that over that middle post there okay and then get this on i was wondering why it was sticking up kind of a little bit all right so we got this black screw in this corner here first i'm going to loosely fit it then we'll go ahead and take this one and we'll get that screw okay and line that all up and tighten that down there we go all right get the other screw over here drop it in and get that in all right and hmm, tiny clip all right and then we'll get this all right and sometimes these corners get like dust built up on the hinges so let me brush that real quick into the trash next to me all right there we go let's go ahead now and get the bottom cover back on so pretty simple Oh, actually, let me dust this little area. It's not really dusty, that dusty, but might as well, since we have it open, get that little bit of dust out. That's where the fan pulls in the air and then blows the dust out. The one thing about this design is because it doesn't have all those fins, it's less affected by the dust, but uh, either way, you wanna try and keep it clean. Okay, so this goes in, you go at an angle here, okay? Because you wanna get the back portion in first. Make sure, click that in, push that all down, work your way down the sides, all right, do some CPR on it, and then get these screws back in. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, again, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well. Um, I also have, again, another channel called It's Been Reviewed. Um, that one I'm trying to get to take off. Um, but right now I'm double posting the videos on this channel and the other. So 
if you don't want my videos all mixed and you want um, where all the reviews are separate or you only want to watch these kinds of reviews, the repairs, um, if you help get that channel up quicker, I'll be able to stop posting them on here. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get the rest of these screws in and we're pretty much good to go. We'll of course power it on, make sure everything's good. I didn't see a separate CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery in here, so most likely it uses the main battery for that. Um, but yeah, other than that, let's flip this over, power it on, make sure I clipped a few more clips into place. Okay, and let's power it up. <clears throat> Hopefully I don't need the charger. I might need their charger because <laughs> right now it's not doing anything. So yeah let me ask if they have the charger if not oh actually okay it's turning on it just took a little while and that might be because the bios was reset so anyways it's spinning around and we're good to go all right that's pretty much it thanks for watching again and i'll see you on the next one all right oh i'll wait till it completely starts just so you can see that it's actually turning on here we go all right i'll see you on the next one Let's drop this bye